sanctuary. Come on, everybody, bless the Lord in the sanctuary. Look at somebody and say, he's the Lion of Judah this morning. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. And Your name. 
somebody make some noise in here for Jesus. Somebody lift Jesus high. Yes. Oh, one more time and say, He's holy, holy mighty, mighty, worthy, worthy of the glory. Of the glory. He's holy. up in here. Come on, lift the name of Jesus up in here. Make some noise in the sanctuary. Let God know that you're in here. So it says, whose report will you believe you say? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report do you believe say? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Come on, whose report do you believe? We, we shall believe
you without wrath or doubting him name of Jesus we lifting up holy hands before your God everyone lifting up holy hands before the Lord giving him praise and giving him honor and giving him glory for the things that he has done how the things that he has done in your life for the things that he has done for us he said if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my faith turn from their wicked way Praise God. Then when I for him, hear from heaven and heal the land. The land needs a healing, oh God. God, the land needs a healing, oh God. We ask that you heal the land, oh God. Heal it in the name of Jesus. We come before you, oh God. Lifting up our holy hands. Magnify you for your goodness and your mercy. Begin to thank God for his goodness. Begin to thank God for his mercy. Begin to thank God for everything that he has done. Begin to thank God for what he's brought you from. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But begin to give God his glory. Begin God his praise and honor they deserve it. We thank God for his strength and his honor that he has given us. We thank God for everyone that came out today, praise God, that they came out to, to meet you, oh God. Everybody came here for a reason, oh God. We came here for a reason to meet you, oh God, that you would just give us the desires of our heart and meet the need, oh God. Meet the need of the people, oh God. Meet the need, oh God. Meet the need of the people, oh God. Lord, we ask you these things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Have read Psalm 100. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word.
You may as well go ahead and put your hands together, amen. Watching while I pray, no matter the hour, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Cause this be the war. 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 Control, every attack I want. Hallelujah! But watching every day, and I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Cause The blood stays the same. The clothes are on. He's attacking every day. But I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Cause
you have for me. Hey, hey, it is for me. Hey, in your timing. Hey, hey, it shall be mine. Hey, it shall be mine. Hey, it shall be yours. Hey, hey, just be. Amen. We're sitting on the Lord on this Lord's morning. We praise God. We honor our superintendent, a founder in this house, Superintendent MacDub. Let's honor him right this morning. Let's celebrate him. Come on, celebrate him. Come, let me do better than that. Let's celebrate. Celebrate the man of God. To all the elders and ministers that are here, to the missionaries as well, Mother Barney, praise God. To Church Mother Myrick, praise God. To my companion, Sister Hayes, and to Chairman Cochran. To the guests and friends that are in this house on the day. We thank God for blessing us to be in this house again. Amen. Thank God for his goodness. And we just thank God for being God. Amen. He woke us up this morning and he started us on our way. But he didn't have to do that. But I'm so glad I could be like Prince on the day. But I thank God the Lord has allowed us to be here. A few days ago, one of the superintendents in Memphis, Memphis Tennessee his son was only 42 years old, had a blood clot in his leg and took him out of here. And I praise God, I heard Bishop Bronner on yesterday. His uh, youngest brother was 37 years old, I believe, and that he was the most healthiest one of his family. But something took a place in life and it just took him out of here. Death is everywhere, come on. And I thank God for his grace. Come on this morning, saints. God didn't have to let us live. He did not to let us live. Hallelujah. 
And I thank God as the choir was singing, you can have my increase. God has given us increase today. He's given us increase. Hallelujah. He's given our families to love and to bring up in the way of the Lord. I just praise God for that on today. But I'm going to present to you one of our 10-minute sermonettes on this morning. I just thank God for how God is adding to the church. Amen. We often say as such should be saved. But I thank God God bring folk that's already saved. Amen. And he's yet opened the doors for those who want to come in this house. Isn't that a blessing? Come on. I'm excited about it. Wherever God leads you, understand I have a whole lot I can say, but it's not about me today, but I'll, I'll come back and do that if the Lord gives us, but I praise God. But I want to receive this young woman who all the way from the way of Chicago. Amen. She came here on an assignment, and she basically came just, you know, I'd rather go here, I'd rather go there, but the Lord led her here. Come on. And she made acquaintance with someone on the job. Now, I wonder what kind of relationship you got with your friends on the job. Are they going to follow you to the church or follow you to the club? But I praise God. And she came on the night that God gave me superintendent Bible study. Everybody say Bible study. It's the night designed for the people who want to know about God. I said, Bible study is for people who want to know about God. We don't know enough about God, saints. No matter what kind of degree you got, no matter what, how, much, how long you read your Bible. But the minute we stop trying to build and stop to grow, we're not going to go anywhere. And your spiritual life is going to be on a hold. Because there are deeper debts. Come on. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard and how can you hear without a preacher you got to be in the place where the feast of the Lord and the word of the Lord is being brought forth and I just praise God but she came on a Tuesday and in that small setting of people she found that we was for real up in here anybody up here for real today the real people of God are here. And I want to present to you this dear young woman of God. Let's receive her as she come, missionary Mary Little, as she come at this time. Everybody, can I get a hallelujah in this place today? Thank God, thank God, thank God. I want to give honor to Pastor, to the founder, to the missionaries, to the elders, to the people of God, just for being obedient to walk up in this house today. I am so grateful and so thankful just to be here. You have no idea how faith deliverance, Church of God of Christ, have changed my life in these last few months. Amen. I have I have begun to seek and desire holiness, sanctification. I mean, it's one thing to seek to be saved. It's one thing to seek the things of God. God, I want this, and God, I want that, and God, I want this, and God, I want that. But God wants something from me. Amen? And, 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 and I begin to think, you know, I'm waiting on this, and I'm waiting on that, and I'm waiting on this, and I'm waiting on that. And so the word came to me and said, but Mary, how are you waiting? How are you waiting? So I want to talk to you and just bring to you this scripture, Isaiah 40, verse 31. I'm sure everybody in here is familiar with it. And it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and do not faint and not faint. Amen. I want you to look at the eagle in here. I never would have thought, but I want to be an eagle, okay? Because in order for an eagle to fly, in order for him to soar, he has to wait. The eagle has to wait on a, a wind thermal to come up under him to take him so he can soar to the next level. Amen? 
I want to wait on the Holy Spirit. I want to put my wings out. I want to outstretch my arms, and I want the Holy Spirit to take me up to the place that God has for me. Amen? Somebody in here is waiting on something. They said, you can't have my breakthrough. Somebody is right there at their breakthrough, and they ready to let go. But I need you to mount up like that eagle, okay? Did you know that if an eagle don't wait, did you know if he starts to flap his wings too hard, he'll die? You didn't know that. I didn't know that, but I did some studying earlier this week. I said, wow, I kind of feel like me when I'm flapping in the wind, trying to find my way, and I lose my strength, and I lose my way. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't have to do all that because God is going to do that for me. Amen? And so did you know that the, the eagle can sometimes sit for days, perched up, how are we waiting? Are we going to murmur? Are we going to complain? Are we going to bicker? Are we going to do it ourselves? Because like that eagle, when he said, you know what, I'm not waiting on that wind thermal. I'm just going to take off. He can die. The eagle's wings are so heavy that he, when he's flapping, if that wind thermal don't take him, he will die. The burdens of our life, the burdens in our hearts sometimes can be so heavy, and we try and take up, we'll die. So I'm here to tell you, don't give up on your breakthrough. Don't give up. I want us to mount up as, we, as eagles, amen? I want you to stand there and stand perched, amen? And hold that up, and you wait on the Lord, and you be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Worshiping at 450 Turner Road, where our pastor is Pastor Terrence O. Hayes, Sr. And we like to say we thank God for him getting back safe with the people that were with him, that God kept him over the airways and kept him safe and brought him back to us on today. Our mission statement says that Faith Deliverance Church of God in Christ is the place where ministry, music, and the saving of souls is our goal. It is to ensure the souls of men and women are led to Christ, to have a desire to live a life-changing experience, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Our weekly scheduled services are as follows. Sunday school at 10 a.m., morning worship at 11 a.m., Bible study on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., family worship on Fridays at 7 p.m. And also we offer corporate prayer here every first and third Monday. This is at 6 o'clock. We invite you to come and be with us in any and all of our services as they go forth in the Lord. These are our announcements. Founders Day will be Sunday, May the 1st. We're asking that you please prepare to be a blessing to our founder, Superintendent Norman McDuffie. Amen. Also, Sunday School and YPWW Literature Orders are due the second Sunday in May. Order forms are at the information desk. And you can see Sister Viesta Cosby if you have any questions. All 2016 high school and college graduates. Please give your graduation information to Sister Ramona Wilson and your announcement to be read to Sister Clack. The Faith Deliverance Ministerial Alliance presents instructional training on sermon development. This will be held Tuesday, May the 10th at 7 p.m. This seminar is free with free registration. There will be a light dinner served promptly at 7 p.m. Please see Sister Vicki Holmes to register. The Faith Deliverance Fellowship Dinner will be Sunday, May the 22nd. This is for the entire membership. 
More information will be provided as the women are asked to donate the side items and the brethren the pop, water, ice, and monetary donations. See Mother Mark with any questions concerning this. This is a wellness announcement. April is Donate Life Month. Transplantation gives hope to thousands of people with organ failure and provides men and others with active and renewed lives. Learn more on how you can give the gift of life. Visit donatelife.net or take information from the lobby brochure rack out in the back. I want to say we thank God for Mother Knight. She had a birthday on the other day, and there was a dinner here yesterday. We thank God. 90 years old. I believe she's the oldest one of the saints here. And we thank God for Mother Knight on that beautiful celebration on yesterday. Along with that, we have birthdays. Sister Phyllis Titus's birthday is today. Today. Amen. <laughs> Happy birthday. But Travion Thompson's birthday is April the 25th. And also, again, Brother Knight's birthday was April the 24th. And our own Elder James Clack's birthday is April the 29th. And Sister Deborah Walder's birthday is April the 30th. And Sincere Spencer's birthday is April the 30th. So tell them happy birthday if you see them on today. And also to our anniversary people in the month of April, Brother Tony and Christine Brown and Brother Orlando and Vicki Edwards, tell them happy anniversary. Asking again that you continue to pray for the sick, the shut-in, and maybe those ones that have lost someone. Pray for Brother Jerome Lewis, that the Lord will continue to lift and touch his body. And also, I thought I saw Von Cochran in here today. Amen. See, thank God for bringing you out today. She's back from a little trooper, and we thank God for having her with us here on today. And also, uh, those ones of us that travel to this different st to st uh, Cleveland, you know Superintendent Clinton Gray, I believe is his name. And we're asking that you pray for that family and the loss of Superintendent Gray, that the Lord would give them um, uh, help, that the Lord will touch them. And also, I understand those services may be next Friday sometime. Now, we want to acknowledge some things here. Graduations and we got some marriages. The president, the faculty, and the graduating class of Wright State University, College of Science and Math, announced the graduation of Monica Cosby on April the 30th, 2016, at 10 a.m. with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology. Commencement ceremonies will be held at Wright State's Irving J. Nutter Center. Clark State Community College, Clark State Community College, Springfield Regional School of Nursing cordially invites you to the Registered Nursing Program Spring 2016 Penning Ceremony. This will be Friday, May the 6th, 2016 at 6 p.m. Clark State Performing Arts Center, Coos Auditorium, 300 South Fountain Avenue. This will be in Springfield, Ohio. You can say it. We'll, we'll clap for everybody when we get through here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. Sister Kimberly Cunningham Precious. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got real excited there for a minute. <clears throat> Sinclair Community College. The president, faculty, staff, and graduating class of Sinclair Community College announced the deferring of degree on Friday, May the 6th, 2016, at seven o'clock in the evening at the University of Dayton Arena. Martina Sanderson will be receiving her associate's degree in criminal justice science slash corrections. Amen. Damn, got some good ones coming up here. The Board of Trustees President Provost and faculty of Liberty University are pleased to announce that Terrence Orlando Hayes Sr. is eligible to graduate with a degree of Master of Arts with a spe specialization in pastoral counseling. The, con the conferred ceremony will be held at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning, the 14th of May, 2016 in Williams Stadium, 
Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> Liberty University commencement. The Board of Trustees, President, Provost, and Faculty of Liberty University are pleased to announce that Craig Walter Jr. is eligible to graduate with the degree of Bachelor of Science with a major in Criminal Justice, Youth Corrections. The conferral ceremony will be held on Saturday morning, the 14th day of May, 2016, at 10 o'clock in the morning at Williams Stadium, Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia. The Board of Trustees, President, Provost, and Faculty of Liberty University are pleased to announce that Sharita Renee Hayes is eligible to graduate with a degree of Associate of Arts in Education. The conferral ceremony will be held at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning, the 14th of May, 2016 in Williams Stadium, Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia. So let's get them all a hand. Amen. A lot of graduates there. Now we got a couple of Marys. Mr. and Mrs. Terrence O'Hay Sr. request the honor of your presence at the marriage of our daughter, Tanisha Brianna Hayes to Mr. Brandon Quince, son of Mr. Tony and Mrs. Jackie Quince. Saturday, the 30th of April, 2016, one o'clock in the afternoon, right here at Faith Deliverance Church of God in Christ. There will be no public reception to follow. <laughs> The pleasure of your company is requested at the marriage of Pastor John R. Boston II to Misty N. Benjamin on Saturday, the 7th day of May, 2016, at half past one in the afternoon. This will be at Mount Calvary MB Church, 3375 West Siegmenthaler Avenue. Refreshments immediately following the ceremony. Those are marriages. We also have another thing here. When I count my blessings, I always think of you. To Pastor Hayes, Mother Myrie, and the Faith Deliverance Church family, we would like to thank you all for your gracious kindness and hospitality shown to us throughout the illness and loss of our dear mother and grandmother, Mother Lula Wilson. It was very humbling to be on the receiving end of your love and kindness. We appreciate all of the de delicious food, the phone calls, the visits, and most of all, your prayers. It is what got us through. Please continue to pray for us. We love you all with the love of God. This is from the Wilson and the Dunn family. And, and, and while I'm standing, let me acknowledge for my husband, we thank you. The, the church for what you've done, what you've done on behalf of my husband's uh, brother passing, and for all of you all that reached out to us, we thank God for you. It's an open invitation, thanking you for what you've done for us. We thank you. Now, we ask again that you remember the military and remember the children when they go back and forth. I know they're almost out of school, but still continue to lift them up because they need our prayers as they move about the city. Pray for this city. Pray for these little babies. Pray for all these things that you see happening around us. God bless you. Faith Deliverance. Church of God in Christ is the place where... Thank God for the calendar. It was quite full, but we praise God for the great things that God is doing in the life of his people. Amen. And, you know, we have the college graduates. We thank God for your accomplishment. Also, the high school graduates. Where are you at this year, high school graduates? In the house this morning? Any high school graduates in the house? They're not here? Praise God. I heard we had one. Praise God. He's not here. We wanna, we're not overlooking you all. Praise God. Amen. So just know as you get those information to the Secretary of the House of the Lord and the Nelson personnel, uh, we will do that for you. Uh, the Superintendent Gray's funeral will be on Friday in Sandusky, Ohio at 11 a.m. So let's pray for the Gray family and the passing of him. 
uh, God has taken another uh, shepherd of the Lord away from the flock of his people. Again, we, uh, keep that in your prayers. Um, I would also like to say that we thank God for all the uh, visitors that are here this morning. Amen. To the sister from Virginia, she came back. We welcome you back in our house. Amen. To other, any other visitors in the house, wave your hand. I didn't get any cards today. I don't think I got any cards. Amen. But we just praise God for that. But we have a young lady who I thank God has been coming to the ministry. And uh, I love, I came to Sunday school and uh, she got my attention and she wanted to talk with us. And I thank God we sat and had words with her. But uh, she desires to become a part of this ministry. Amen. The song says, come on in. Our arms are open wide. We welcome you. Hey, come on in. Our arms are open wide. We welcome you to the place. Jesus. And on that note, I'm going to ask Sister Constant Brooks to come on. Hallelujah. Come on in. Hallelujah. In to worship. God for Sister Brooks on this Lord's Day and I thank God she has been coming several weeks and as pastor of the house I observed her she don't just come she get into the worship amen she was in Sunday school of course on last week as well and was there today but I thank God God has given her great testimony matter of fact this is her mother her daughter right here Katia amen and I love the fact but this woman has a testimony and as sister little began to express something as she said what God has done for her just being here these few months see when you come to the house of God he wants to do something to you he wants to do something for you oh you can join the church you can be a part of the church but you just be joining the church but what do you want God to do when you join the church Amen. So, Sister Constance, I, I, I don't do this quite often, but I just thank God for you being with the heart that you have and the, and the excitement that you have and the joy that you have that God brought you here. What do you want to say to the people of God? I want to say God bless y'all. This church is full of love. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to cry. I'm going to show my makeup. <laughs> um, I told the pastor this morning, that my spirit is being fed by this church. And um, I got shot when I was 12 years old. Yeah. And I was paralyzed from the left side, from my waist to my neck. They said I would never use this arm again. I have been in battles with my drug addiction. 
Um, I'm four months clean off of crack cocaine. Did you hear what she said? Do you understand what she just said? Four months. Four months. I ask God to take the taste of alcohol and marijuana. And now I'm two weeks clean off of that. Two weeks? Glory, glory. They also told me when I was younger that I could not have children. I have four children. I have eight grandchildren and two great grandbabies. Last week was about obedience. And I'm telling y'all, God whooped my behind. But I said, if I can get up for crack cocaine and drugs, I can get up for the Lord. And I mean, he woke me up every hour on the hour. But I understand that obedience is my deliverance. And I want to be delivered. She wants to be delivered. He's doing it right now. Come on, people of God. Hallelujah. With Sister Brooks, with your confession, with your testimony, and with your obedience of obeying the Spirit, let me tell people something. She, she came from another affirmation. She came from another ministry. She came from another church. She has nothing against her pastor. But this church don't belong to Terrence Hayes. This is God's house. And when there's a sheep that wants to be fed in the house of God, who am I to push him away? Who am I to say, go get a letter? Who am I to say, go get permission? Permission from who? We've done church too long. We've done church too long. Get a letter. Get permission. But God, everybody say God. When God is in control. We just are under shepherd. And my arms are wide open. And I receive them in this house. Come on, clap your hands. And on that conviction, that testimony, Sister Brooks, I welcome you to faith deliverance church of God in Christ and when you said that word on last week the pastor didn't preach last week that's why God got some people in this house that got a word in your mouth that got a word in your belly cause your obedience is your deliverance I receive you and welcome you to this house. You're now part of the God family. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for your deliverance on this woman's life. Oh God, you dried up the cocaine. You dried up the weed. You dried up the alcohol. Now God, fill her with the Holy Ghost. Fill her, Lord, with your power. Fill her, Lord, with your spirit. Let her know she's in the right place. She came at the right time. And we bless your name. Thank God. Come on, bless him. Glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey.
Hallelujah. What a way to come home. Hallelujah. I thank God for that soul. I thank God for that daughter, mother and daughter. And I thank God for Sister Kennedy. Sister Kennedy, you in the house. Is that Sister Kennedy? Sister Kennedy, we thank God for you. Amen. You brought these souls that followed you. Amen. I thank God. Amen. I'm going to read a scripture before the deacons come. This is a, this is a good day. Uh, Superintendent, I must be honest with you. I, I came home, got off the plane about 1130 from uh, Orlando, Florida. I appreciate uh, the young men who went along with us. And uh, praise God, uh, we got here. And uh, to go to Orlando, Florida, and only drive six miles in a rental car, I almost didn't need the rental car to go to Orlando, Florida. We didn't go to the beach. We didn't go to the beach. Praise God. We ate food. And pretty much somebody left their shoes and we had to go buy them a pair of shoes. They had to go buy them some shoes <laughs> at the shoe store. And that's the only place we went. But we were in church the whole time. Yes, church. You see, when God allows us, I want to thank this house for allowing us to go uh, because I'm on an assignment for the Lord. And uh, I praise God, I, if I could do that more, I perhaps would do that more, but I don't do that often. But I thank God when I do go, I come back totally inspired. I, I come back totally encouraged. And I come back renewed in my mind because I have to say, I need you to pray for my mind. Pray for my mind. The theme of this service was think your way clear, clear thinking, clear things. Like this water, this is clear. And everything had a clear picture. I heard so much about vision. If you don't write a vision, Superintendent, somebody will write it for you. <laughs> If you don't give the direction that God has given, someone else would just do that. But I thank God. I, I have to say this. Uh, when you go to a conference and hear men of different affirmations, again, I'm going with the word affirmation. God, this is God's world. Worldview. World understanding. World vision. And the world church. He said, go ye in all the world and preach my word to all nations and all people. And when people from all across the country can come to a conference, there was a gentleman out, where was he from, guys? What was his name, Willie? This guy came from, he said he was paid six years to come to this conference. And, they, and the people just start pouring money at him. Literally. A stranger, come on. I think y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And it was a blessing to see that. To be in the presence to hear my Caucasian pastors preach to us. Young man came up, Pastor Futrick, has a 10,000 membership. He said, oh, I felt a little bit intimidated coming up in here. Because I have never seen this operation in where he serves. But Bishop T.D. Jakes opened the door for that young man. Come on. And he preached. Did he not preach, brothers? He preached a great word. What I'm saying, God has helped our hearts. I'm part of Church of God in Christ. I will always be part of Church of God in Christ. But I've got to be honest. Some things in Church of God in Christ, we have to learn to do better. Come on. We have to learn to do better. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat, and you clothe you with the wool. 
You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. This young lady says she's being fed today. Come on, souls. Let me ask y'all a question. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but are you being fed in this house? Are you being fed in this house? It says the diseased have you not strengthened. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Oh, we hold about a broken. Bishop Bronner, Mother Barney, I never heard Bishop Bronner. That brother preached the word. And he used his granddaughter as an illustration. She broke a crayon. The young girl got a little hurt, a little upset about it. But her grandfather took that broken crayon and said, broken crayons color too. <laughs> Y'all catch that later. You see, if you're broken and hurt, I'm talking to somebody. Broken crayons. Still color. <laughs> Don't be upset. If you've been upset, you've been broke, you've been hurt, you've been discouraged, God, you still have life. Come on. You still have purpose. Broken crayons. <laughs> still color. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Now, I can't talk like T.D. Jake. See, basically tell the people, if you don't like where you are, go away. He can, he can say that. 330,000 people. But he said one thing. He said, we got to stop believing everybody and tell us that they love us. Because, wait a minute. Because if you believe all that, when they go away and hate you, you'll be, you won't be shocked <laughs> because rest assured somebody gonna hate you everybody ain't gonna love you but we gotta prepare our minds and our hearts to learn to let people go Ruling in the fear of God. Let me say this. All of us need to have a Paul and a Timothy in our lives. Way. I'm not here to I'm not to make nobody feel bad because I'm gonna be honest I got to do what God said for me to do as you can see this I sent an email to the saints of God who got email bare bones ministry everybody say bare bones ministry y'all just get ready other words are gonna make y'all happy I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be pastor right quick <laughs> bare bones ministry dry bones
Brother Macduff is no longer the pastor because the law and I got out of order. He got out of order. We love babies. We love children. But we can't let them just do. We didn't have this kind of place. This kind of space. It wasn't right to do it then. But bad habits are hard to break. I told y'all we didn't have hardly no visitors today, so we we edit what's it gonna make y'all happy <laughs> i have to obey the holy ghost because i'm not fussing that's the last thing the bible says don't do it with cruelty i don't have, i don't fuss but maybe some of you may question my leadership because i may not do it like you think i should i'm trying i'm doing the best i know how because this is really hard this is really hard I heard a sentence that said, do you hold something against me? I don't like you no more because the one thing I said you didn't agree with. One thing. So that one thing goes against everything that I do. One thing. The human side of us, we all make mistakes. I've made a lot of them being pastor for 12 years. But at the end of the day, I don't hold those mistakes against nobody. I love you. I can't, I can't be a pastor holding my holding your sins against you. Hold your wrongs against you. You talking about growing, we will never grow. We'll never grow. We'll get smaller. But I thank God that there are people who are obedient to the work of God. There are people who are faithful to God. There are people who trust God, heart of integrity. You have an opportunity to go higher in this place. You have an opportunity to go higher in this place. And I just thank God I had to get that off my heart, get off that my spirit, because I want us to do better, saints. Come on. Let's do better. Let's do better. People want to come to this place to host things but there's one word i'm gonna say the bible learned this if the infrastructure is not strengthened 
that's going to cause a problem that you cannot do what you want to do because everything is without the without the mortar and the bricks the mortar is what holds up the brick not the brick it's the mortar yep brother lewis don't put no mortar on that brick what's gonna happen it won't stand a house divided against itself talk back to me it will not stand so saints of god on this day this may april 24th 2016 let's all make a personal confession to god i won't do it no more grass come on the weeds the crooked crumbs you won't do it no more and let God bless us because he's taking us somewhere I said he's taking us somewhere he's taking us somewhere I want to go where the Lord take us I want to go where the Lord take us everybody's not a leader everybody's not a leader people got positions they think they leaders they're not a leader they just holding a space but God's leaders are about being active being proactive getting results making things happen come on somebody talk back to me and that's what God is baiting us to do we're gonna stand father God we thank you for this moment of confession this moment of transparency forgive us for our slackness forgive us for our murmurings forgive us for our complainings forgive us for our wrongs and forgive us for our misunderstanding forgive us Lord you brought us here in this place and oh God just like some of the children of Israel said they would have better off in Egypt instead of going out to the place that you had promised them but oh God we don't want to go back we want to go forward in you oh God we want to go forward in this ministry we want to go forward in the work of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus now oh God send your people Lord oh they coming they're coming from other places they're coming from other folds but oh God but we are a shepherd that's concerned about your house concerned about your land concerned about your souls concerned about everything oh God that concern of us fix it oh God those who won't don't pay their tithes oh God Lord they stand in this house and don't pay their tithes God fix that soul Lord this is how the ministry moves forward without finances we'll be shut down but thank you Lord God for your tithe payers for your offering givers oh God touch those who are not able oh God somebody is not able oh God but oh God meet their need oh God don't let it be out of disobedience but meet their need oh God turn their lives around turn their finances away the song said you can't have my increase breathe on their increase oh God and breathe on their finances you have given us to do to you be faithful to that and as we magnify and prepare for this offering oh God give our tithes and our offerings bless those that have to give bless those that have it not but let us give our sacrifice freely give it willingly into this house and your name we pray thank God amen I'm going to ask you to bring your Lord an offering your tithe on below praise God just Pay electronically whatever the Lord has given you. Amen. The speaker will be Elder Timothy Wilson. Amen. As you give your offering, let God bless you real good. And he's going to bless us because we've, we've repented and confessed our, our sins for God to bless us. Amen. Come on, church. Come on. Clap your hands to the Lord. Amen.
The other day I was sitting contemplating Another way to live this life And from the May It seems impossible to make its moves My money looks funny but change looks strange There's never been a day where I felt so much We're lying at the end of the tunnel But in doubt You told me all I needed was a mustard seed of faith mm -hmm. To move mountains mm -hmm. and to part the sea There's nothing to pay for me This battle's not yours but mine you. Just see it through my eyes If I brought you to it, I'll get you through it But just believe that it's, it's not impossible No matter the test, no matter the trial I go through It's not impossible Keep holding on, gotta stay strong and go through It's not impossible I'm gonna stand and fight, no matter what it looks like It's not impossible, not impossible So now, when I come to mountains, I'm telling myself don't worry And now, when I'm crossing through a valley, I'm telling myself you're there mm -hmm. Cause I learned the power of keeping you with me It makes all the things reachable mm, When it don't seem feasible I remind myself of what you told me So just believe that it's, it's not impossible Whoa, No matter the test, no matter the trial I go through It's not impossible I gotta keep holding on, gotta stay strong and go through It's not impossible mm -hmm. Gotta stand and fight, no matter what it looks like It's not impossible Ooh, yeah. It's not impossible, not impossible Which come of your help, my help coming from the Lord no Next Sunday again is Founders Day. Amen. Amen. We want the saints of God to let God speak to your heart. Uh, Founders Day is simply to honor uh, the, the work of this place under the leadership of the founder of this house, uh, Elder Mac, Superintendent McDuffie. Amen. As Bishop Kimball said to him, he will always be a superintendent. Amen. He has resigned from that official role. Uh, I want to make sure I quote you, Superintendent. I don't want to come and say nothing that's not facts. You're no longer superintendent, correct? Okay. Yes. Amen. Yes. He got rid of the load of being superintendent. And I believe that being 84 years old, come on, saints. Hallelujah. He deserved whatever decision he made and none of us need to question that or doubt that and no one said that so don't 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 run with my words uh, one thing that I like to say that God has given me I, I want the God to help me be who I am and when you be who you are you have you make no apologies for what you say when your intentions are genuine amen he deserved that and no one can question that and I thank God for that but we want to be a blessing to him uh, on next Sunday and that's a financial blessing uh, I gotta be honest I walked down in Orlando Florida and I found out one good thing of many things I found out when you give in a ministry you are sowing your own blessing 
because this man sold in ministry. I said, this man sold. Come on, fool y'all. Now, now, those of us that know him should have been really clapping with some thunderous applause. But Elder Wilson, I got totally convicted even the more. Word of God said, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And I was at the table with the young man. I said, one thing I'm finding out about ministry, I'm learning, superintendent, and always seemed like money is attached to it. Hold up, hear me real good. But the Bible says, money answereth to what? Talk back to me, saints. Every purpose, come on. So to those who feel that money is all the church won't, no, the money don't want all your money. It don't belong to you anyway. It belongs to God. But when you sow into ministry and you sow into people's lives, it's going to come back. Amen. When the bishop asked for 12 people, was it 12 or 10? 10 people. How many was it? Okay, 10 people for $10,000. Thanks to God, they had about 100 people on that stage that gave $10,000. $10,000. Then he asked for those who want to give $1,000. Then he asked for those who want to give $100. The people came. Floods of people. I'm exposed to this. And the young man that preached is such a dynamic word. I felt for him because Bishop told him, said, son, when the anointing is like that in your life, somebody got to sow into that anointing. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying? Y'all hear what I'm saying? We want to sow in this man's anointing next Sunday. Come on. We want to sow. Don't come saying, Pastor, I don't have it. I don't know what you don't have. <laughs> but we prepare for this all year long. We want to sow into his ministry on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. So let God bring you $100, $200, $300, whatever God give you. But let's bring it with joy on next Sunday because he deserves it. But I want to say to this house, God has put in my spirit, we're going to sow some greater works in this house. Come on. In our giving. Come on. God wants us to sow greater. I ain't going to bother y'all this week. What let next week get over. <laughs> But if God spoke to me, if we want to prepare for our future, we got to prepare for it now. We got too much land out there to do nothing with it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I know y'all get tired. Bishop T.D. Jakes is building a $25 million edifice for his young people. For who? The young people. $25 million. Because they are our future. What are we going to invest in our children in this place? Come on. What are, what are we going to? Come on, talk back to me. But we got to put something in it for it to happen. I found out something. We stop building, we'll stop growing. Don't y'all get compensated. Pastor Hayes, we got to pay this off. And who going to? It's bigger than I am. But we can't stop having vision. We can't stop having dreams. We can't keep having, see, I want to be around some people that want to go somewhere. Come on. Y'all supposed to be pushing me to go. Y'all supposed to be, come on. Y'all supposed to be pushing me. <laughs> because we're pushing this for God. Not for ourselves. Not for ourselves. Not for ourselves. Not for ourselves. I got too many grandkids. 
I got too many adult children. You got too many family in this house. Come on. This ain't a family church. This is God's church. Come on. My baby, this is her last Sunday up in this house. Lord have mercy. As a single woman, not her last time in this house. Amen. And I got to say, I got to, she asked me to put them together. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to walk her down the aisle. I'm going to marry her. I'm gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. She could ask anybody to do that, but she asked her daddy. That's my baby girl. <laughs> so, no, I ain't trying to do everything in the church. I want to live. I want to live. I want to live and not die. And the fact that I want to give my best to the Lord. Like I want to give my best to my wife. Amen. I need to give her the best of me. Come on. Yeah, y'all know if I can sing like my brother. All of me, you got all to you. You're my. Amen. I don't, I don't know the words to that, so I better not try to sing. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, let's get ready for Elder Timothy Wilson. Amen. I want to say this. The Lord has brought him through. Uh, the Lord has taken his mother away. And uh, we had some words and I shared with him as a brother who'd been there. I used to imagine how I would respond if my parents died in my mind. I would imagine it. But when it really happened, all the imagination went away because it's an experience that you will never forget. But God has brought him through that season of his life because I know this young man loved his mother. Amen. And she loved him. It was his mother who opened the door for me to expose me to Memphis, Tennessee. She gave me $500 in 19, what, 82, 83. And that was a lot of money back then. It's still a, a whole lot of money today. And I will never forget Mother Wilson for her sweet kindness. She was firm. She was stern. She told you how she felt. She told you the truth. But I praise God. But it was his mother who had that, that kind of impact on our lives. And I thank God today. So now, I done took a lot of time today. Brother Wilson, don't come up here and say the pastor didn't preach. No, I ain't preached. <laughs> I asked you to come and give a word to this house. Because I had to release myself. Being pastor, you only get one time to be pastor on Sunday mornings. But there's a word that needs to come forth from you. Amen. Don't worry about the clock. Don't make no apologies for the clock. Come on. We are on our way to heaven, saints. God is bringing souls to this place. Amen. We don't have Sunday night service. <laughs> So we shouldn't be in a hurry to get up out of here. We didn't got too programmed with some things. I heard something else. Mother Mark, Bishop Jake said, Elder McDuffie, thanks like you. We don't got to have communion every first Sunday. I'm trying to be in a trend and make sure I keep people comfortable. But guess what? We didn't got to do it every first Sunday. I got a little concerned because I find communion cups in the church. Find them in spots. I find them in places. Oh, wait a minute now. They're not taking communion. But if you're examining yourself, then you need to get yourself right with God. Come on. I've seen it in places. But I praise God. But I want to be the pastor that God is calling us to be. Amen. In these last evil days. So uh, it's my happy privilege to bring to you at this time. And everything that we haven't gotten in order, don't worry about it today. It's not about that today. Because this was God's day. I didn't do everything you might want me to do today, but that's okay. I relieve my spirit. And I'm looking to see better next week. 
Come on, better next week. Come on. I must say, and I'm going to say it to the glory of God, I certainly thank God for the great work that Brother Jeff Cunningham did in this house. I thank God. I thank God. And I thank God for his dedication. I thank God for his faithfulness. And it's been about a year next month that we have served in that area as a pastor. And the reason why we stayed there, because the Spirit had me to stay here. Everybody say the Spirit. When I read that word from this morning about the dry bones, the Spirit carried. Read that verse again. Ezekiel 37 and 1. This is, this is the Lord's day. And McDuffie said he got off that load of being superintendent. Read that verse again. The hand of the Lord. Listen, saints of God. Read it again slowly. No, the hand. The hand of the Lord. Uh-huh. The Lord has been carrying me, saints of God. He is carrying me with this work in this house. I want y'all to hear me real good. What the saints of God got to do when a man of God lets the Lord carry him, your job is to pray for me. Your assignment is to pray for me. Sister uh, Bennett loves this house. And she don't like guys wearing hats in this house. But Sister Bennett, Bishop Bronner said, a young man came to his ministry and he had a hat on. And she said, he said, and he told the people, don't worry about that young man with that hat because he's in the house of God. Amen. Hear what I'm saying? If he come in the house, that's where we want him. It's not about his hat. It's not about his clothes, but it's about his soul. Come on. Come on, somebody. And I immediately thought about Sister Bennett. Faith deliverance, we going somewhere. <laughs> and we might not be going the way you think we should go, but we're going to go the way God say go. Come on. <laughs> Tradition will hold you backwards. Rules and what we did, that's not respectful. Come on. We won't be respectful with a hat on or taking it off, but we won't even shake our brother and sister's hand. How respectful is that? So don't y'all, let's, let's, let's let God carry this house. Spirit of the Lord, finish your son. And he set me down. I told you I got on my knees on that ground. On that drop, he sat me down. I didn't care if the drug he was going to come and get me in the night. God had my back. I wasn't afraid. Because he sat me down on that black top out there. Uh-huh. In the midst of the valley. Y'all the valley today. Some of us are dry. Some of us are very dry. But I again thank God for the gift that God gave Brother Cunningham in this house. And what the Holy Ghost said to me, my son Terrence, I, I love that boy. You know I love him. I like something about him. He got something he, he likes to kind of push at me. <laughs> Not disrespectful. But I said, the way God is going to bless this house, he got to connect everybody. Because the music department should be connected to the preaching.
preacher and the preacher should be connected to the deacon and the deacon should be connected to the mother come on the every every all of us are connected together and when God made me pastor in 2202 he gave me three words to train equip and empower understand what empowerment means saints it means you have the authority everybody say authority but if you can't be under authority you can't be over authority. I want y'all to hear me real good oh the pastor just gave me some authority and he want to be a football player knock every all about lock everybody down knock everybody out no you got to come under the blood of Jesus come on and serve with humility but I had some life lessons learned. Some things that I've learned in this year. Whoever God has placed to the work in this house, all of us, all of us, need to stay in our lane. Because the end result is going to affect something down the line. Some of y'all right now probably don't know what I'm saying. You may not agree with what I'm saying. But guess what? God has my mouth open. Set me in this valley. And he said, can these bones live? Yes, we can live. Come on, can't we live, saints? If we love one another, respect one another, got to set some order in this house amen y'all gotta y'all should be excited about that and that's gonna be tough but we gotta do is right because at the end of the day I gotta protect y'all I gotta protect brother Cochran to get off his job you got a business I gotta protect Brother Laurente, who works has a works at a, a business. I gotta protect all of us, my son, all of you, Brother Craig. I gotta protect you, women of God, who gotta get off our natural jobs. Serving this house is work. It is work. It takes a lot to orchestrate a funeral in this house. Repass, come on. And we don't even have all the tools to do it. But we got to connect and come together, saints. Come on. Feel my burden like Elder McDuffie got his burden of relief. I want y'all to feel my burden. <laughs> Lift the load. Lift the load. And when God releases me from what I'm doing, then I'll be released. Until then, you pray for me. Come on, pray for me. Pray for me. Come on, pray. Pray for me. Pray for me. I'm almost there. But I thank God for holding on because he's carrying me. I've said enough for today. I'll be back. Not today. <laughs> uh, but I want other Wilson to come as God has given him, the anointed man of God, to preach a word that God has given him in preparation for the day. But I love God. I love him with all my heart. But obedience is better than sacrifice. If anybody walk out of here and talk about what I said today in a negative way, then you don't have my back. You don't have my back. Because if I can't be Timothy and, and a Paul and, and I can't be the Barnabas, we need all these in the ministry. I don't care what we do. This is not a perfect church. There's not a perfect people. We try to do the best we can. Amen. Judas is going to always be in the church. Sam Ballard and Tobias sitting right there in the pews. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. I'm aware of all of that. But at the end of the day, Mother Mark, we still love the people of God. Keep praying for the church, Mother Mark. Thank God for a praying church, Mother. Thank God for my wife. My wife loves me. I'm going to let y'all know, my wife sees all the hurt I'm dealing with. 
She's seeing all the pain I'm going through. She sees it. That's my wife. And I believe she loves me. But she sees what I'm going through. She may not understand all the things that I'm doing, what I'm going through, but at the end of the day, God knows we want to we please God. We want to please God. So pray much for us. And let's say amen as this young man come with a word from the Lord. Amen. to be in the land of the living. I'm certainly humbled to be standing here, and, but we love the Lord, and we thank God for who he is. And we thank God for the heart of a pastor. Amen. We thank God for that. And we trust that you will pray for us as we stand here today. We will not, trust me, will not be long at all. But in the word of the Lord, in the book of Second Kings chapter 2, very familiar passage of scripture, about Elijah and Elisha. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgag. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. 
and the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knoweth thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry ye here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. Bethel was considered the house of bread, the house of God. And here we find the servant of the Lord, servants of the Lord, where God was about to do something miraculous in both of their lives. He was going to remove his manservant, Elijah, from the servant Elisha. But Elisha had a desire to want something from the man of God. And he knew that he had to stick close and stay close by in order to receive his promise. Therefore, when the uh, servant came and told when, to Elisha that his master was going to be taken away. He wasn't disturbed or perplexed because he knew and could see no doubt that Elisha was going to be leaving him very soon. There's something about when God gets ready to remove someone who is very close and endeared to you, how he will give you the assurance that everything is all right and that it's okay. Hallelujah. So we find Elisha wasn't uh, disturbed by the news of knowing that his master was going to be taken. But it just gave him a reassurance that God was going to do something for him. And if I could get someone to pick up reading in the fourth verse, beginning of the fourth verse of that second chapter would help us so much. Thank you. Uh-huh. Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me now, uh-huh, to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. They were getting into the midnight of the taking and the going away of Elijah. Uh-huh. And the sons of the prophets 
Mm -hmm. And said unto him, Hold your peace. Uh huh. You see, and Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Now, the mantle was a garment, if you would, that prophets wore in that day as a sign of their calling from God. The prophet Samuel wore a mantle in uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 27. The mantle was a significant uh, thing of that day so that the people would know that this indeed was a prophet of God. Yes, Hallelujah. So uh, he took his mantle and he wrapped it together and smote the waters and they divided hither and thither. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. And it came to pass when they were gone over mm -hmm. ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Look at the heart of the man of God. He told him, just ask what you want me to do for you. Because you have been a servant. I want you to know that I have love for you. And I appreciate what you have done. Uh-huh. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for a position. He didn't ask for fame, but he just wanted a double portion of the Spirit to be upon me. In other words, he wanted a transferring of what Elijah had to come upon him. And history records that Elijah done about nine miracles in Israel. And history also lets us know that Elisha did about 18. So he got a double portion. Uh-huh. I want you to know that what you have asked me here is a hard thing. Yes, mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Nevertheless you you if you see me when I am taken from thee, yes, it shall be so unto thee. 
But if not, it shall not be so. Other words, it was on condition. If you see me when I'm taken away. The Lord was getting ready to lift him up by a whirlwind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's something about the wind of God. When he allows his wind, which represents his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. When we get into his spirit, we can receive what it is that he has for us. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass. As they still went on, they talked. there appeared a chair of fire and huh, horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Can you imagine as Elisha was sitting there, no doubt, by the bank and saw this wind formulating and began to see Elijah being lifted up into heaven and the fire coming uh, in a chariot of fire and horses of fire parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. Thank you, Jesus. And he cried, my father, my father, the chair of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he took hold of his clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle. Thank you, Jesus. See, the mantle was important. Of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Hallelujah. I can imagine in my mind's eye, no doubt how Elijah must have felt. Thank you, Jesus. I can imagine that as he was standing there and he saw this great thing happening, right in his eyes. No doubt he was saying to himself, Lord, I want you to work for me just like you work for Elijah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody need to know the God of Elijah still works miracles, still puts us in the fire. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm so glad in the fire, I said in the fire, we can be like the Hebrew boys as they stood for God. The Bible tells us that when they decided to take a stand, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, that the king thought he had them. He said, you have disobeyed my orders. You have gone against my command. But I'm so glad, I said I'm so glad that God would have us to stand in the midst of adversity when people uh, will persecute you. 
and say all matter of evil against you falsely. He said, for my name's sake, he said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. They tell me, I said they tell me that when these boys decided to stand, thank you, Jesus, that the king, he said, I'm not only going to throw you in the fire, but I'm going to heat it up seven more times. Yes, yes, but I'm so glad that God is God. He sits high and he looks low. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God stood with them, went on in the fire with them as they threw them in the fire. Somebody looked in the fire. Thank you, Jesus. And they tell me that the king, he stood up uh, off of his throne and said, uh, did not I throw three me into the fire? But I see, I see four walking in the midst of the fire. Yes, yes, God, I said God will make a way out of no way when you persecuted, done wrong, falsely. Thank you, Chief. I'm so glad. I said I'm so glad that God is I are beholding the evil and the good. Thank you, G. Thank you, G. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, G. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, G. They tell me that the king, he got up. And he declared, I see four walking, walking in this fire. Thank you, G. And that same fire, I said, that same fire, it leaped out. How to lose. Thank you, G. It leaped out onto those men that had cast them into the fire. God, I said, God, i make a way out of no way. I know he will. I believe he will. Thank you, G. Thank you, G. When people set up traps for your downfall, Thank you, Jesus. God is just standing back. And he'll tell you, just like he told Elisha, to, to tell the men, hold your peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You ain't got to say nothing. But God come to your defense. God, I'll fight your battle. For I heard him say, vengeance are mine. I will repay, saith the Lord of hosts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And they tell me, that when the king saw 
this happening. He said, I'm going to make a decree that everybody has got to serve this God. Thank you, G. Thank you, G. God will fight your battle. And I heard the song today. This means, this means war. But the saints are the weapons of our war are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds, pulling down that person that's fighting against you. God will, God will fight your battle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But we got to humble ourselves just like Elisha did. He said, hold your peace. Thank you, Jesus. Otherwise, I'm not interested in something bad happening to us. I know what my God is going to do. He's going to deliver me. Hallelujah. And he's going to give me what my heart desired. For I heard him say, I know the thoughts that I have of you. Thoughts of peace. And to give you unexpected end. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm waiting on my expected end. I'm waiting on my deliverance. Hallelujah. For I heard the Apostle Paul. He said, Lord, I know I'm not all the way together, right? But the good that I will do, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that I do. But who shall deliver me from this wretched man that I am? I heard him say, I thank God through Christ Jesus that giveth me the victory. Jesus is going to wash up. Wash me, wash me where I need to be washed. Save me where I need to be saved. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. They tell me that Peter love the lord hallelujah and one day the lord let him know said peter do you love me and he said lord you know i love you thank you jesus he said feed my sheep Thank you, Jesus. And they tell me that Jesus asked him again, said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. I can seem no doubt getting irritated and agitated. Hallelujah. You know, you know me. You know I love you. He said, but I want to let you know before the crock crow, you're going to deny me three times. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us may have denied him, but I want you to know that Jesus knows us. Thank you, Jesus. And he told Peter this, 
Peter went on, and after a while, Jesus was about to be crucified. Thank you, Jesus. And the men came to arrest him, and they tell me that Peter drew his sword and cut off one of the men's ears. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, uh, let him know, uh, put it up. Uh, we're not going to fight uh, like that. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. And they tell me, uh, after a while, after a while, Peter uh, began to slack off. He began uh, to follow uh, from afar. Uh, have you ever slacked off and followed from afar yes I know I have thank you Jesus and I ask God to forgive me thank you Jesus thank Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. She said, you look like one of them. Hallelujah. And Peter began to curse and sweat. After about the third time, the crock crowed. cock a doodle doo cock a doodle doo And he remembered the word. work thank you Jesus and they tell me that Peter Peter remembered what the Lord said said to him thank you Jesus hallelujah we got to remember what the Lord is saying to us today don't follow from afar but stay close by the fire Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. 
anybody here. You know you've been following from afar. And you need to get closer to the Lord. You have an opportunity today to come unto the Lord. The Word of God don't come for nothing. 